My God, I hate drugs. Representative Richard Garin turns over two more of his firearms to police in San Juan City here in Metro Manila. The San Juan City police say a staff member of Garin handed over the firearms and ammunition to them this morning. Garin is said to own a house in the city where the two firearms were being kept. The lawmaker and his father, Gum Gimbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin surrendered 14 out of 19 firearms listed under their names to local police last week. Authorities canceled their permits to own and carry firearms after they mauled a police officer. The Garins are also facing criminal and administrative charges over the incident. No doubt Wall Street investors are happy to see 2018 end. It turns out the extremely volatile year was the worst U.S. stocks have seen in a decade. The Dow fell 5.6 percent. The S&P 500 was down 6.2 percent. And the Nasdaq lost 4 percent. Not only was it the worst year since 2008, 2018 was also the second year both the Dow and the S&P ended lower since 2008. And here at home, the additional excise tax on fuel is already in effect. That's two pesos per liter of diesel and gasoline and one peso per uh, liter of uh, kerosene. An additional tax as well for liquefied petroleum gas or LPG at one peso per kilogram. But even if the tax is already in effect, it should not cause pump prices to shoot up immediately. The Energy Department earlier told oil companies to clear their 2018 inventory first before charging the additional tax. Violators may face penalties such as closure and large-scale estafa. Some good news though for senior citizens, they can now get additional discounts on medicines for hypertension, high cholesterol and diabetes. Health Secretary Francisco Duque says under the tax reform law, maintenance medicines for those illnesses are exempt from the 12% value added tax. That brings the total seniors discount on medicines to 32%. Four devotees of the Black Nazarene welcoming the new year also means preparing for the annual traslacion. In this report, our Makoy Popioko tells us hundreds joined a Marian procession in Capo Manila yesterday. The coming of the new year is also the start of the Feast of the Black Nazarene here in Capo Manila. And for many devotees, worship begins today with the procession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. From Capo Church, the Marian procession began shortly after 6 p.m., joined by hundreds of devotees who chose to spend the first day of the year for worship. These devotees say after four days of rains in Metro Manila, the sun is up again today, a sign that the celebration ahead is blessed. The procession passed on Evangelista Street, then right to Puyat Street, straight to Carlos Palanca Street, and then on to Villalobos Street, back to the church. Church officials have announced in November that life-size replicas of the Black Nazarene will be placed along different stations in this year's Traslacion. They say this is to reduce congestion during the procession. Devotees can approach the replicas instead of wrestling with the crowd to touch the centuries-old image of Christ. Last year, about 6 million people joined the procession, according to church officials. On January 9, millions are again expected to flock the streets of Manila to show their fierce devotion to the Black Nazarene. In Capo Manila, Makoy Popioko, CNN, Philippines. Authorities are now investigating the deadly bombing in Cotabato City. Military officials believe the Islamic State-linked Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or BIFF, is behind the incident. But they are not ruling out the possibility that other groups are involved. Two people died and 34 others were injured when an improvised explosive device went off before 2 p.m. on Monday near the entrance of the South Seas Mall. Local police say they are reviewing the CCTV footage taken at the mall to help identify the suspects. Meanwhile, in separate statements, the European Union in the Philippines and the Japanese Embassy expressed condolences to the victims and their families, adding that they stand in solidarity with the country. Malacanang also condoles with the families of the victims of the bombing in Cotabato. In a statement, Presidential Spokesman and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panelo said they will get to the bottom of the incident at the soonest possible time. He also called on the public to stop speculating as this may only sow unnecessary fear and panic. 
It is crunch time for Congress in 2019. The 17th Congress will only have 12 session days before it goes on break once again in February for the campaign period for the May elections. So what can the Senate and the House of Representatives do in a limited period of time? Joyce Eles has that story. For politicians, 2019 is synonymous to midterm elections. And for the lawmakers among them, the need to act on their legislative agenda in just 12 session days before the campaign period for national candidates begins on February 12th. Topping their agenda, the unfinished 2019 General Appropriations Bill or the 2019 budget. The Senate failed to pass the measure in December for a lack of time. Senators have blamed House colleagues for the delay after they took time realigning funds to their districts. The Senate resumes session on January 14th to rush the budget approval on second and third readings as it is a priority bill. Select senators will then meet with some representatives to come up with a common budget version. The budget process alone would take up much of the Senate's time, but Senate President Tito Soto says they still plan to pass other priority measures. He says these include strengthening workers' right to security of tenure or the end-to-endo -end bill. Others in the Senate agenda, amending the procurement law, local government code, and the omnibus election code. Soto adds they also plan to raise penalties against illegal gambling. Lawmakers may also tackle the proposal to scrap the controversial road board. Soto assures the public that senators will remain independent in doing their job. If it's good for the people, if it's good for the country, we support. If it's not, we do not. I mean, uh, instances na hindi kami... <coughs> Basta basta sumusunod sa sinasabi ng executive. Uh, we have our own uh, rules and uh, our own interpretation of uh, things. At the House of Representatives, House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo said they have passed the president's legislative agenda outlined in his 2018 State of the Nation address. My concern is not my legacy as speaker. My concern is to support President Duterte's legacy in the year that I have as speaker. And next year, we will be able to attend to your pet bills. Arroyo says they plan to exercise their oversight function to make sure policies are carried out by implementing agencies. Joyce Ila, CNN Philippines. Some real property and business owners in Quezon City get a tax relief. That's because Quezon City Mayor Herbert Bautista has signed an ordinance granting them tax amnesty. This means delinquent real property and business taxpayers can pay interest, fines, and other penalties for taxable year 2018 and prior years until October 20th, 2019. The QC government says the incentive will serve as an alternative measure to encourage its delinquent taxpayers to become updated with their tax payment records. The amnesty program aims to enhance local tax collection and generate more funds to finance the city's projects and obligations. From the top stories here in the country to headlines across the globe, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un reiterates his commitment to denuclearization during his annual New Year speech. But Kim warned that he may need to pursue a new way if the United States continues to make one-sided demands of Pyongyang. The North Korean leader also said he's willing to sit together with the U.S. president at any time. Kim adds if Washington takes reciprocal measures, then the two nations will advance at fast speed. The family of an American detained in Russia on accusations of spying speaks out. Paul Willen's twin brother, David, says they are deeply concerned for his safety and well-being. David Whelan says his brother is a former Marine living in Michigan and works in corporate security. He adds Paul has traveled to Russia many times for work and personal business and that he was in Moscow for a wedding of another former Marine. But the Kremlin says Whelan was arrested while, quote, carrying out an act of espionage. David says his family is anxiously waiting for a representative from the U.S. Embassy to check on Paul's well-being. The family does not know any details about Paul's detention, only that he is alive. And rescuers save a baby from the rubble of a collapsed apartment building in Russia. Dramatic footage shows workers pulling away debris to reveal the child, described as less than a year old. Officials say the baby boy was hospitalized in serious condition. The building collapsed after a natural gas explosion. At least eight people died in the incident. 
Welcome back to the program. More people dead because of floods and landslides triggered by the final weather disturbance of 2018. Disaster risk reduction officials have raised their count to 78 after Tropical Depression Usman hit the country last week. 21 others are reported missing, while 15 others are injured as of 6 p.m. on January 1st. Government says it is still verifying data from the regions. Usman affected over 45,000 families, mostly from the Bicol region. The provinces of Sorsogon, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, and Albay, as well as eight towns in Oriental Mindoro, are now under a state of calamity. This allows for a faster release of relief funds.